What type of functional group is this? Which one? Sorry. This one. Aldehyde. Right. And this is a ketone. Now these are not carboxylic acid derivatives, even though they kind of look like this, because these are not considered L groups because they can't leave. Not only are they bad leaving groups, they are just unacceptable leaving groups under any conditions. So these would not be considered L groups. They're their own separate category. That's why you had one separate chapter for aldehydes and ketones, and now a separate chapter for carboxylic acid derivatives. The big difference between them, this is an important point to emphasize. The big difference between aldehydes and ketones and these other molecules is that the carboxylic acid and derivatives have possible leaving groups. And aldehydes and ketones, these groups down here can't leave. Sometimes the carbonyl oxygen can leave from an aldehyde or a ketone, but these groups down here can't leave. All right, so here's our carboxylic acid derivatives, not aldehydes and ketones. So this is a common mistake people make. Oftentimes people think that a carboxylic acid derivative will react like an aldehyde or a ketone. Well, it doesn't. For example, we should never use our three categories for these types of reactions over here. These three categories were only for aldehydes and ketones. These three categories are not going to apply for carboxylic acids and acid derivatives. We need a whole different type of reaction. Remember, there's one other type of carboxylic acid derivative that we mentioned, which was cyanide, or nitriles. We mentioned that this is also considered a carboxylic acid derivative, even though it doesn't look anything like these other ones. It doesn't look anything like the other ones. Because you can make it into a carboxylic. Right, by hydrolyzing it. Remember, that was our definition. All of these will hydrolyze to carboxylic acids. That's a, a reaction you're going to go over in chapter 20 for these reactions here. All of these could hydrolyze to form a carboxylic acid. Uh, even though cyanide doesn't look like these others, it also hydrolyzes to form a carboxylic acid. That's why all of these are considered carboxylic acid derivatives. But we won't talk too much more about cyanide right now. These are the key carboxylic acids. Um, now, theoretically, you might need to learn nomenclature for all of these different types of compounds. One, two, three, four, and carboxylic acids makes five. So that's a, that's a lot of nomenclature that you might need to learn. So you need to make sure how much of this you're responsible for. Uh, some of these have both IUPAC and common names. You, uh, like I said, you have to go through your notes and see um, which of these types of nomenclature your instructor is emphasizing. And, uh, sure those are making sense, and if you have any questions about that, maybe in the future we'll, we'll go over that. All right, but to stick with our uh, reactions here. So what is, uh, let's see, so. What is the general reaction that happens here? What would we expect to happen in a reaction between a nucleophile and a carboxylic acid or acid derivative? The nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon and the leaving group will leave. That's right. However, Eventually. that's right. This is a, basically two main steps. So the first step would look like this. And then the O minus gets protonated, right? In, in this simple case, actually the O minus is not going to protonate oh. because now, what, one thing that's going to be a real driving force here, I think we might have mentioned, or maybe we haven't, I don't think I've emphasized, carbonyls are very happy, stable bonds. If a molecule loses a carbonyl, one of its main goals is to reform the carbonyl. This is something that's emphasized a lot in the second language book. If you unform a carbonyl, the molecule will try, if possible, to reform a carbonyl. So how can we reform the carbonyl here? Well, I think you already mentioned how we can do that. We can just kick this negative charge back down and have this leaving group leave. I repeat that line like 800 times. And the, if possible, the carbonyl will want to. In the second language yeah. book? Yeah, that's right. Well, if you got a good line, you want to keep repeating it. That's right. So that really, um, the fact that that gets repeated so much just indicates how that pops up in a, whole, a lot of the different reactions here. So here's the basic reaction for carboxylic acids and acid derivatives. Um, the carboxylic acids and acid derivatives go through other reactions, but this is by far the most important type of reaction, um, where the nucleophile attacks, which unforms the carbonyl, and then the carbonyl reforms, kicking off the leaving group. Notice that overall, this was just a substitution. Overall, we just took out the L group and replaced it with this nucleophile. Overall, we've just taken out the L group and replaced it with this nucleophile. So overall, it's just a substitution. It's a very simple reaction if you don't go through the whole mechanism. 
Now, this is a little oversimplified because if this was acid catalyzed, there would be a bunch of protonations and deprotonations. We saw that when we were going through aldehydes and ketones. Here we have the main reactions, but we saw that if it's acid catalyzed, there can be a lot of pesky protonations and deprotonations that I haven't shown on the board yet. Um, but the main reaction is very simple. First, you, the nucleophile attacks, and that unforms the carbonyl, and then the carbonyl reforms, and the leaving group leaves. Now, notice that this is not something we could have done with aldehydes and ketones. Why not? Because this is not an L group. This can't leave. Notice that when you attack an aldehyde or a ketone, the carbonyl does not reform. When we attack aldehydes and ketones, the carbonyl can't reform because, as the second language book likes to say, you can't kick off an H minus or an R minus. Those are not possible L groups. Um, that's why they're in a separate category from carboxylic acids and acid derivatives, because those have things that can be kicked off to reform the carbonyl. So I want to emphasize that, because that's one of the common mistakes I see students make. They try to treat these new re functional groups as if they were just aldehydes and ketones, but it's a whole new type of mechanism here. So we're not treat dealing with the old three categories. Now there's really only one category. Attack the carbonyl and reform the carbonyl. It's really much simpler than aldehydes and ketones. We just attack the carbonyl and then reform the carbonyl, and then this leaving group over here leaves. Uh, why is it reasonable for this carbon to be electrophilic? Because as usual, it's got a delta positive and there's also a resonance form where it has a full positive. So, um, by the way, another good uh, description that the second language book has is that it calls the L group a kind of wild card. Because basically we're just taking one wild card and replacing it with a different wild card. So for example, we could take any of these molecules and replace the L group with a different L group. 